Gong Zan, the Iron Fist General, a military-minded man who sees ruling a state much like commanding an army. He has earned a reputation as a fierce warrior, defending the Empire against foreign foes from beyond the border, and did so with an Iron Fist. He was known for using white horses against the Wuhuan people, as they considered them to be a holy animal, and thus wouldn't attack him. He stands firm in his beliefs and is unafraid to do what he feels is right. Hello, my name is Mr. Smartonkey, and today we're going to be taking a look at the ins and outs of Gongshin Zan's faction in Total War Three Kingdoms. Before we do that, however, a quick look at the game Surviving Medieval, of which the developers have kindly sponsored this video. Surviving Medieval is a game in a similar vein to RimWorld, Prison Architect, and Dwarf Fortress. You start off with a couple of peasants and some resources, which you use to build yourself a settlement. You'll need to make sure your peasants stay happy and to manage your resources well, as you'll need them for what's to come. You'll be able to research new technologies, improve existing ones, trade with merchants, and perhaps most importantly, build walls, ballistas, and traps. Why would I need such things in my peaceful little town, you ask? Well, the game isn't called Surviving Medieval for nothing. Surviving Medieval will release in the third quarter of this year, so make sure to wishlist it on Steam if you're interested. There will be a link in the description. Now, back to Gongshin Zan. Let's start with Gongshin Zan's character and faction specializations. Gongshin Zan's unique character traits are plus 50% reinforcement range and plus 12% armor for all shock cavalry. Increased reinforcement range is not something you'll be able to make use of very often, but a 12% armor increase for all shock cavalry is certainly useful. Archers are shock cavalry's biggest weakness, especially in the early game when shock cavalry haven't got shields yet, so increasing their armor by 12% makes them a lot more resilient. Kongshin San does not have a unique resource, he is in fact the only coalition member not to have one. Instead, he has unique military inspector court positions, and has reduced administrator slots available. The military inspector court positions act in a similar way though, although they provide more unique buffs, and each of the five different positions can only be filled by each of the different roles. This allows you to focus more on certain things in each province, like increasing food production by 100% and decreasing construction time of agricultural buildings when you use the agricultural inspector position, which can only be filled by a champion. Gongshin Zan's playstyle focus is balanced military, which refers back to him ruling his lands like a military man, and not as a governor. Gongshin Zan has two unique units, these are the White Horse Raiders and White Horse Fellows, both mounted archers which we will look at in more depth later. Gongshin Zan has one unique building, the Military Government, which is a replacement for the Administration Office, and among other things adds a sizable public order bonus, but takes away the option of reducing corruption in the adjacent provinces. Finally, Gongshin Zan is accompanied by Zhao Yun, whom we will look at in more detail later. Gongshin Zan starts in the capital of Zhubei Ping, facing off against a small Han Empire force. Speaking of the capital of Zhubei Ping, this is Gongshin Zan's starting region, a level 2 town that has a level 2 inn already built, as well as an open construction slot. Since the other region in this province is a trade port, I would advise building more commerce income increasing buildings such as a marketplace or the private workshops. That brings us to your neighbors. Starting in the north, behind the army Gongshin Zan is facing off against, is the iron mine of Yuzhu owned by the Han Empire. This will likely be the first region you take if you follow the missions. To your east in the trade port of Zhubei Ping, and to your southwest in the fishing port of Bohai, you'll also find the Han Empire. Both of these are solid targets too, as the trade port will complete the commandery of Zhubei Ping, and the fishing port will provide you with some much needed food. Finally, to your west you will find Liu Yu in the town of Yuzhu, who is one of the subjects of your initial dilemma. The dilemma will make you choose to go to War of Liu Yu to your west, or Han Fu to your southwest. As you can't even see Han Fu's territory at the start of the campaign, this seems like a solid choice as it will make Liu Yu like you and thus you won't have to worry as much about him attacking you. It's all a trick however. Choosing that option means Yuan Xiao will confederate Han Fu in the next turn, and your relationship with him deteriorates drastically, meaning you can expect him on your doorstep before long. Perhaps even more important than all this, however, is that you keep an eye on Gongshan Du to your northeast. Because while you're busy in the west and south, he loves sneaking up on you and attacking you in the back. So perhaps you'll need to take him out before committing anywhere else. Moving on to Gongshan Zan's already unlocked reform, which is regional commissioners. Decreasing the recruitment cost of units faction-wide, and also giving him easy access to the increased military supplies that military market gives. Finally, a quick look at Gongshan Zan's family tree, which isn't very large. Besides Gongshin Zan himself, he has a strategist wife Song Jinting and a 16-year-old sentinel son, Gongshin Zhu. Moving on to your legendary characters, starting with Gongshin Zan himself. 
The Iron Fist General is a vanguard, meaning he excels at destroying enemy troops but shouldn't be left alone against his generals. Just like every other legendary character, he starts off with an extra resilience, meaning he'll survive an extra battle in which he would otherwise die. Other than that, he gets his faction-wide buffs we looked at earlier, and a whole heap of stat increases. Gongshenzan's traits are brave, indecisive, and determined, which among other things provide him with increased morale when commanding, increased cover cost for enemy spies, and decreased character experience. His skills provide him with buffs such as increased battle running speed and charge speed for his retinue, and most importantly, an ability that increases the morale of all enemy units around him. Finally, Gongshenzan has a few unique items his Dreadbringer Spear, and his own unique armor. Dreadbringer increases his instinct by loads, but decreases his expertise quite substantially. It also gives him the Scare ability. His unique armor increases his instinct, authority, and speed in battle. Gongshenzan is accompanied by one of the strongest duelists in the game, Xiao Yun. The light in the dark is a sentinel, meaning he murders literally everything. Generals, units, overweight tyrants, name it, he's killed it. His faction-wide bonus is plus 9 morale when defending, which of course is only active if he's your faction leader, heir or prime minister. Other than that, he gets a ton of stat increases as well as the plus 1 resilience all legendary characters get. Xiao Yun's traits are brave, kind and honorable, which among other things grant him morale when commanding, a reduced penalty from desire for higher office, and a decreased ambition to gain independence as administrator. Xiao Yun's skills provide him with buffs such as melee attack rate, increased melee armor piercing damage for his army, and most importantly an ability that increases his acceleration, speed and charge speed in battle. Xiao Yun also has the unique ability Elemental Vigor, which is a variant on the Tenacity of Steel ability, but instead of increasing both base and armor piercing melee damage, it only increases its armor piercing melee damage, but additionally grants a huge increase to his melee evasion as well as making him unbreakable at the final level. Xiao Yun only has a single piece of unique gear, his armor, which increases his expertise, gives him range block chance, and increases his charge bonus. Let's have a look at Gongshen Zan's unique units, of which there are two, the White Horse Raiders and the White Horse Fellows, both solid ranged cavalry with very solid melee stats, but let's start with the former. White Horse Raiders are available for Gongshen Zan's generals once they reach level 3. They are almost a direct upgrade from the regular mounted archers available to all factions. Their armor, firing rate and ammunition is slightly lower, but in return they deal more range damage and have a stupidly high charge bonus and melee evasion. This means you can use them very much as a shoot and charge unit, charging at the enemy and weakening them a bit beforehand by shooting at them during the charge. They're also among the fastest units in the game, so you won't have to worry about them getting caught if you do skirmish with them. Let's move on to the White Horse Fellows, which are available to Gongs and Zan's generals upon reaching level 6. Like the Raiders were almost a direct upgrade from regular mounted archers, the Fellows are essentially a direct upgrade from the Raiders. They are however a little slower as they have increased armor, and they also do a little less armor piercing range damage. But in return, they do increased base range damage, have more ammunition, and most importantly more range. They also have an even better charge bonus and melee evasion, making them quite a scary unit to behold, and I mean that literally. The cherry on top of both of these units is their ability to scare enemy units and being immune to scare themselves. This combined with their high charge bonus makes almost any unit route after being charged by either of these units. That's gonna do it for the Gongshen Zan faction overview. If you have any more questions feel free to ask them in the comments and I shall do my best to answer them. Also let me know which faction you'd like to see me cover next. Don't forget to wishlist Surviving Medieval on Steam if you haven't done so yet and the game looks interesting to you. Finally, if you're thinking of purchasing Total War Free Kingdoms yourself, please consider getting it from 2Game, an official online retailer I'm affiliated with. You'll get a Steam key at a great price that gets even better if you use the discount code SMARTDONKEY at checkout. If the game is region locked for you, just change the currency in the top left of the screen and that'll fix it. If you'd like to just support me making this type of content instead, make sure to check out my Patreon page. All the relevant links will be in the description. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed, have a good day and goodbye.